As we get closer to this election, we are gonna be doing what we've done in previous cycles, talking with candidates. Many of them will be new candidates. In some cases, luckily we will be able to speak with people that we've had on the show before. And we're very lucky to welcome back to the show, Donna Imam, welcome back to the Damage Report. Thank you so much, it's so great to be on, John. Uh, we're we're always glad to talk to you. Um, you know, in in the last cycle, you were running for Congress in the 31st district in Texas, and we spoke several times um, during that election. Uh, we, we can of course talk about um, you know the actual results of that and everything, but we also have some structural changes to the districts in uh, in Texas. So can you talk us through uh, all of that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as you all know, and your viewers have possibly you know, uh, seen or met me before. Uh, my name is Donna Imam, and I'm running for US Congress in now what is called Texas's 37th district. So after redistricting census 2020, what Texas saw was 95% of the population growth in Texas was Hispanic Americans, Black Americans, and Asian Americans. And as a result of this major growth, Texas became one of the most you know, diverse states in the entire union. And what we saw as a result of that, Texas gaining, and I think I believe it was the only state that gained two new US congressional districts. Now, you may all know that Texas is ruled by the GOP. They have a trifecta here. So mm-hmm. we actually didn't quite expect there to be a Democratic leaning or a solid blue district in Texas at all. We thought it's very possible that the GOP might make them both very red, right? But in mm-hmm. order to shore up all their current GOP members in Congress, what they did is they created a brand new district in Austin, Texas, the 37th district, which is a strong blue district, which is where I am running. And I have been redistricted into this brand new district. Um, and that's where I'm running in 2022. Now, uh, th- for those of you who don't know me, I'm a computer engineer. I have an 18 year career here in technology, uh, working at some of the most iconic uh, companies in what we call the Silicon Hills. Uh, it is the you know tech capital of Texas. And uh, I ran a nonprofit, a 4,000 member nonprofit that pro- provides free training and education for anybody who wants it. So that's my background. And awesome. I know. You uh, you asked about last time's results. I have really great news there. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, let, let's talk about it. So in the last cycle, because of amazing supporters, many of them which came from your TYT interviews, by the way, we had the highest Democratic voter turnout in the history of the district. We had the highest t- voter turnout in the runoff, Democratic voter turnout. Uh, I ended up winning the nomination through a runoff election with a double digit lead, which I wasn't uh-huh. supposed to do because I was a first time candidate. And get this, we were number one in Williamson County in terms of voter turnout in all of Texas among the top 25 most populated counties. So in terms of turning out Democrats to vote, we hit the ball right out of the park and were able to really deliver on that. And a lot of people ask us, well, why is that important? You know, And the reason it's important is Texas is so gerrymandered. And you know, in 2021, Texas was on the news over and over again, not mm-hmm. for good things. <laughs> uh, the, only not way we ta- <laughs> the only way we take back Texas and bring back some normalcy here is by winning statewide seats. And statewide, there's no gerrymandering. So if you can get out the vote, especially in the bluest districts, including the bluest city in all of Texas, which is Austin, Texas, you can help flip statewide seats. So that is why it's so essential. And that's why our results speak for themselves. We believe that we are the best campaign to get out the vote in 2022 and help us win some of these statewide seats. Yeah, oh well, yeah. The the turnout is obviously always important, but but especially like it's not looking like this is going to be a cycle that's awesome for the Democrats. They're going to need whatever advantage they can have in uh, in drawing more people out to vote. So um, certainly good good evidence that you have um, in the recent past there in your last run. So in in terms of yeah, as you said, you've been moved into this district. Is it largely the same geographic district? Are there any changes that are gonna impact how you campaign or what you focus on or who you'll be competing against? I know that you're going up against Representative Lloyd Doggett 
um, and, and others. So uh, what about the new district uh, might change how you campaign or is it largely gonna be doubling down on your, your strategy from the last time? Well, uh, the new district is a completely different district. So Austin, because it was gerrymandered, it was sliced into six pieces, right? Like a pizza. Mm -hmm. And so this is a brand new district that takes a little piece of every of those six pieces and creates a completely brand new district. This is a much more urban area. It has all of central Austin, meaning everything what we it Austinites or people who live in Austin know as west of I-35, right? So pretty much the, the, the majority of Austin, Texas. Um, our campaign being a grassroots candidate, and uh, you already you may know this, John, I think you do know it really well, is that what we did is back on June 28th, our campaign anticipated there being this district. And what we said is if Austin gets a brand new district, which we highly anticipate based on the census data, that I would run in that district. And of course, uh, once redistricting was completed and the maps were finalized in uh, October, uh, other people jumped into this race. So it is a brand new district. It is a completely open race with no incumbent. Um, but anybody in Texas can run in any district. And so yes, there is a competitive primary and a very big one at that. So as you know, I'm a grassroots candidate and so our ability to raise funds and being someone uh, you know who doesn't have uh, incumbency for example right been elected into Congress uh, for let's say a quarter of a century right that puts me in a in a really diff, a different situation than someone who maybe has you know five plus million dollars in their war chest right yeah. so uh, it's an extremely difficult proposition and so we have to be really smart about how we spend our very little money to get our message to the voters but here's the good news the good news is that we have a message that voters love and the challenge challenge for us is getting this message to our voters. We believe that if we can get our message to Austin voters, we have a really amazing chance of winning this race and going all the way through to Congress. Okay, and and really fast, what what is the, the next important date in, in terms of the primary? What, what's the timeline that, that you're working with now? So early voting starts less than six weeks, February 14th, right? Which means we have absolutely no time left. So if you're watching this and you're from Austin, Texas, check out our campaign, votefordonna.com. If you don't live in Austin, but you have friends, family, cousins, you know, co-workers in Austin, please tell them about our race and that I'm running. And John, as you know, I'm running on a very strong message for solving homelessness, which is a major challenge in Austin, Texas. We yeah. have over 3000 people and uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, people just having to live underneath the uh, major highways and you know, across, across the city. And so that's a big issue. I'm running on a federal solution for that, number one. I'm also running, I'm a staunch supporter of single payer healthcare. And you know that I have very specific plans, which I've discussed with you in previous you know, uh, TYT appearances that I have a plan to actually accelerate single payer Medicare for all, lower the cost and improve the quality of care with more nurses and physicians, right? This is what we're gonna have to do to make Medicare for all really, really successful. And then eliminating student loan debt, which I've said over and over again was set up originally as a major scam to keep working Americans in debt for the rest of their lives and why it must be eliminated. But that's not enough because we have to support the next generation of students and young people and people who want to get higher education. And one thing I want to point out, higher education is not always four year college, although we need those people. But some people might want to get a six week certification. They might want mm -hmm. to take you know, two semesters of community college, which doesn't result in a associate's degree, but it's enough to get them a high wage manufacturing job. Some of these which are coming back to the United States where you have to have some programming skills, basic programming skills. And so for example, Austin Community College, uh, offers six classes where you get a certification and all of a sudden you are eligible now to go apply for these high skilled manufacturing jobs even without a uh, you know a bachelor's or a master's degree. Yeah. So it's really important us for us to lower the cost of education uh, and really address the cost of education in addition to eliminating student loan debt. So these are my big uh, strong you know 
platform that I'm running on that I would like to take to Congress. Uh, and hopefully people in Austin, Texas see uh, my background and uh, the fact that I've been able to bring many, many, many successful products to market where tens of millions of people of using are using them and put someone in Congress because Congress needs uh, expertise in science and technology. They need Congress members who understand technology in depth and are able to sit across uh, the table from CEOs and technology company and major technology company sit across from lobbyists and call them out on uh, some of the policies that they're writing in uh, to our legislation, which is not good for working Americans. Yeah, oh, you, you raised a lot of great points there, uh, conversations we've, we've had in the past. And if someone is watching this, um, all, all of those interviews are still available. If you wanna search for Donna and the damage report on YouTube, you'll find our past conversations where we've uh, delved into some of these topics. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.